Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Ariema Smur, and today we're going to talk about Tylenol, autism, and the real risks you need to know. So Tylenol, otherwise known as acetaminophen, is one of the most commonly used medications worldwide. But recently it has raised some big conversations. Does Tylenol taken during pregnancy cause autism? And what are the real risks of Tylenol itself, especially for liver and antioxidant defenses? So let's break down the evidence, the myths, and also what you can actually do to support your body. So first we'll talk about Tylenol and autism in pregnancy. So the claim is that does Tylenol used in pregnancy cause autism or ADHD? Here's what we know. Observational studies have found associations, but associations are not causations. Many women who use Tylenol in pregnancy are doing so because of an underlying condition like a fever, infection, migraines, and those conditions themselves can actually increase risk in pregnancy outcomes. Better designed studies like sibling control analysis show no causal link when genetics and family environment are accounted for. There are thousands of scientific papers regarding autism from people who have dedicated their entire careers towards this. For example, there are over a hundred genes linked to autism and there are also environmental factors that are linked. Major organizations agree. So the World Health Organization and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists suggest that there's no conclusive evidence of a causal link. The American Academy of Pediatrics is suggesting that it is safe for children when used as directed. So the takeaway for pregnancy is that if Tylenol is needed, hopefully it is needed for a very important reason, it should be used at the lowest effective dose for the shortest amount of time and always under the care of a healthcare provider. And remember, untreated fever and severe pain can carry significant risks on their own and actually shows higher evidence of a link with autism. So now let's shift gears into the real risks of Tylenol. So even though Tylenol is not proven to cause autism, it is far from risk-free. Number one is it can contribute to liver toxicity. So Tylenol is the number one cause of acute liver failure in the U.S., responsible for over half of cases each year and more than 56,000 hospitalizations annually. Overdose is often accidental when people combine multiple cold medicines, flu and pain products, not realizing that they all contain acetaminophen. So even at normal doses, however, risks go up with alcohol, with fasting, or with pre-existing liver conditions. Other risks can include possible kidney stress, blood pressure increases with long-term use, We can have rare but severe allergic reactions. And there's emerging research on the gut microbiome changes with chronic use. Now, let's dive into glutathione, which is the missing piece. So here's where it gets really interesting. How Tylenol works in the liver. Most of the drug is safely processed, but a fraction of it becomes a toxic byproduct called NAPQI. Normally, when your body neutralizes NAPQI, which is N-acetyl-P-benzoquinone, in mine using glutathione, your master antioxidant. The problem is when you take too much Tylenol or if your glutathione levels are already low, NAPQI builds up and can contribute to liver damage. So this is why hospitals are going to, for a Tylenol overdose, are going to provide an acetylcysteine because it restores glutathione. It's the precursor to that. So supporting your glutathione system naturally is very important. Some of the key nutrients, N-acetylcysteine, glycine, glutamine, selenium, B vitamins, vitamin C, and vitamin E. Some foods that can help boost glutathione would be cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, kale, garlic, onions, whey protein, green tea, turmeric. From a lifestyle perspective, regular moderate exercise, optimal sleep, and breathing while you sleep, stress management, and nervous system regulation all are going to help boost glutathione. And of course, removing things like alcohol or processed foods, which actually deplete it. So Tylenol not only stresses your liver, it stresses your antioxidant defense system. So supporting glutathione through smart nutrition and lifestyle is one of the best ways to build resilience. So why this all matters. Here's the bottom line. Tylenol is not proven to cause autism in pregnancy. That link is not causal. Please know that autism is multifactorial and we cannot say that there's one definitive cause. And let's please have compassion for the parents right now as they need it more than anyone does. But Tylenol does carry real risks, especially to the liver and especially if glutathione is already depleted. Please use it wisely. Lowest dose, shortest time under medical guidance if you have to use it. 
And don't rely on Tylenol as your go-to safe pain reliever without understanding its risks. Over-the-counter never means harmless. Tylenol is one of the most normalized drugs in our culture, but normalization does not equal safety. The best approach is balance. Recognize where it's helpful, respect its risks, and support your body, especially your glutathione system, every day. If this was helpful or you feel like someone would appreciate this video, please send it their way and make sure you like and share and don't forget to subscribe.